Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Well, if you're new here, hi, my name is Katie Wismer. I'm an author and an editor. All of my stuff is linked down below. So I realized we were a little bit overdue for one of the working for myself updates that I usually do every six months or so. It's been about seven months, which is exactly what it sounds like if you haven't seen them before. It's a check-in of how working for myself has done. I compare it to kind of like the previous six months. It's been a way for me to track my progress as I went full-time working for myself and how things have changed, how my books are selling, all that kind of stuff. So to get ready to film the next part of those videos, I was gonna watch the previous one to catch myself up and see what I said last time because I can't remember. So I thought we could do it together, not watching the part where I talk about the numbers and I show all the pie charts and stuff. I'll have the video link down below if you wanna go do that. But I also at the end kind of talk about reflections and predictions. So that was mainly the part I wanted to remind myself of, of what I thought this six months would look like to see if it was accurate. We're just gonna get refreshed together before I can film the updated working for myself update. I don't necessarily have things like things I would do differently as in they were like a mistake in 2022 so I want to do them differently this year. I just have like 2023 is gonna look different and I just have different plans for 2023. 2022 was actually believe it or not kind of a break year for me. I only published one novel and one poetry collection. I took a lot of time off. I took a lot of time to like work on myself and kind of recover from burnout and I'm feeling so much better now so I feel like 2023 is going to be a heavier workload because I want it to be. I'm excited to get back into my projects. I'm excited to get back to work. So I'm planning on publishing at least two books in 2023, both of them being novels, Broken Perfect Lies and Ruthless Ends. I want to write honestly at least four books next year, which I think is super doable. I have plenty of books outlined, ready to go. I'm excited to jump back into it. <laughs> in what world? In what world is that super doable? What books did I have outlined? What did I think I was gonna be writing? I have spent this entire year working on one book and it's still not done. Who does she think she is? So honestly, I'm really happy with where I'm at. I feel like I've been doing a good job of maintaining more balance in my life. So I kind of just wanna Perplexed. stay the course that I'm on. I wanna keep on doing what I've been doing while also staying open-minded and receptive to whatever opportunity comes my way. I do wanna branch out um, when it comes to marketing and selling my books so I don't have to rely on social media so much. A really big way that I sell my books is through TikTok and Instagram, which has been a godsend this year, but I really don't want it to be so make it or break it with me and my book sales because that's again, really stressful when you don't have control over that. So I would like to, I've already like ventured into other spaces, but I've yet to find one be as successful as social media. So I would like to improve, um, the other ways that I sell my books. Yeah, I let other people's opinions. Okay, so would agree. It's still something I'm working on. Something I think I have done better this year because I have gone through some serious lulls when it comes to success on social media in these past six months. And I've tried pivoting my TikTok account with selling my books like nobody's business last year. And then it went through like a three or four month lull this year, which was like a huge stressor. I ended up starting an entirely new TikTok account, which I haven't like revealed anywhere other than Patreon. It's not my name, it's not my face. It's just like strictly to market my books. Um, and that one really helped gain some traction again when my main one wasn't doing that well. I got a lot better at Amazon ads. I ran some sales. I'm doing a Kickstarter right now, which I'll be excited to talk about once it's over and I can really reflect on the full data from that. But that one's raised about $11,000 right now and it's been live for like three days. And that's like the equivalent of a really good month for book sales because of TikTok. When I had a video go viral and sell and get like a million views, I sold about $10,000 worth of that book that month. So in comparison, this Kickstarter is finally something that's doing as well as the social media good months did for me. I still am like <laughs> hung up on what the hell I thought I was gonna be writing this year. I don't know if I th met Broken Perfect Lies, which came out in like February, so it was done this year, so I couldn't have been talking about writing that one. Ruthless Ends was probably one that I was thinking of. I still wanna write Gracie's book, so maybe it was that one. Maybe it was the pen name book with Paige, because we do have that full thing outlined, but that's still only three. So I don't know what fourth book I had in my mind. Maybe the second book in Gracie's books series, because that's a planned standalone series. 
but I haven't started outlining that. I don't know anything about that book yet. I haven't even written Gracie's book yet. I definitely thought Ruthless Ends would be done by now. I thought I would have finished it a lot faster than I have. And looking back on it now, I set up really unfair expectations for myself and I set myself up for failure with that one, to be honest. And I should have given myself more time. Lessons learned. Ruthless Ends has been the hardest book I've ever written in my life. It's taken me the longest a rough draft has ever taken me before. It's the first time I've ever written the last book in a series. It's the most complicated book I've ever written. And for some reason it was, I gave myself a pretty short turnaround. I think I really let the pressure from readers and social media and like the current market get to me where I felt like I wasn't putting books out fast enough. And I felt like if I made people wait too long, they were gonna lose interest or they weren't gonna wait for me. And so I felt a lot of pressure to get this book out faster than was possible for myself, which is why I ended up having to push the date back because I had Bloodless Ties, um, Book of Souls came out in December and then Bloodless Ties came out in November, so not quite a year. And so I was like, maybe I could push that a little bit faster for between books three and four. So then I went from November to September, giving myself an even smaller amount of time when I remember like, that turn on time for Bullet List Highs was pushing it. That was a long book. That was a hard book to write too. So it was just, I let my, I almost want to say like ego get in the way. I was just really leaning more into the business side of things and worrying about the market passing me by and people not being patient. And I would get comments like on a daily basis, be like, this is an incomplete series. I don't want to read it until it's complete. It's taking too long, like all that kind of stuff. And that really got to me. Um, and I wish I hadn't let it. I wish I hadn't let that affect my business decisions because I also think um, writing Ruthless Ends has been really a challenging effort in part because of that extra stress that I gave myself. I may have been able to finish it faster if I didn't have that extra layer on top of it, who knows? But this year has been a lot more like me against me and like battling my own internal struggle than I had anticipated. And that really, really impacted my creativity, my productivity, my ability to write. So I definitely did not see that coming, but I'm working on it. It's a hard thing to navigate when you are a self-published author and you're solely responsible for marketing your own books which means you're online all the time and you see everything everyone says it's really hard to distance yourself from that and not let that stuff get in your head whether you're like consciously aware of it or not it's in the back of your head you've seen it you've heard what people said it makes sense to me that i've slowed down in recent years um as the audiences of my books have grown and i've sold so many more books because there's so many more opinions now and that's not something I had to deal with with my earlier books. So it was easier for me to write a lot of books quickly because I wasn't dealing with that. I wasn't thinking about that. I can't remember anything else that I said, but that's that's what I have to say. Get in my head a little bit this year, which like you never want to do. And sometimes it just happens. For 2023, a really big focus is to write the books oh, that I want to write. Speaking of, I think that's what I'm talking about in this video right now. <laughs> Love the books that I want to write. Not let other people's opinions hold so much weight not let other people's opinions determine what decisions I make. Trust my instincts more, basically. Have a little more faith in myself, have a little more confidence in myself. But anyway, thank you guys so much for hanging out with me oh, today in the video. So much. Well, damn. <laughs> I thought there were more reflections. I'm not disappointed in how this year has gone and it's only August. Honestly, this struggle that I've had with Ruthless Ends, I have a hard time saying the title sometimes. It's been a funny journey because every time I write a book around the end of the rough draft while I do that first round of revisions, my confidence is always at like an all-time low in my abilities and I'm like this is terrible how am I ever gonna get it where it needs to be and I go through this with every book but I like magically forget every time I have to go through it so I went through like a dip for a long time while I was working on Ruthless Ends where I doubted myself and my abilities and especially if you saw the videos come out around the release for Bloodless Ties after seeing a lot of negative reviews for that book I think that also really I let get to me where it was almost like What's even the point of me trying so hard to write Ruthless Ends when I know no matter what I do, people are gonna hate this book? <laughs> like, why am I trying so hard? Like, what's the point? I already can hear the negative reviews. I can already hear what people are going to say. But the point of that is, I went through that like dip in the middle where I just like really couldn't see the light at the end of the tunnel. Two, now that I'm so much further in the process with this book, I actually think I've built a lot of confidence because this has been I literally could not put into words how hard this book has been, how challenging this book has been. It's been like nothing I've ever written before. And the fact that I didn't give up on it, even though it's gotten really hard and I keep pushing through and I keep surprising myself with my abilities, that's actually helped build a lot of confidence. Like this has been a really friggin' hard thing. It's something I've been struggling with 
for a year. A lot of times a book will like have hard patches where it's like fun to write the rough draft and then the first revision's kind of hard and then you get stuck on a plot point and you have these little parts of the process that are hard but overall it's not like you're running a marathon the entire time. This book has been running a marathon in like 120 degree heat with like a 50 pound backpack on my back the entire freaking time. So honestly, I look back on my very ambitious goals for this year and I'm not at all disappointed because this has been so much harder than I thought it would be. And honestly, I'm proud of myself for sticking it out. And I'm not done with it yet, but I think I'm gonna be really proud of this end product. And I think the process of writing this whole series and the process of writing this book is going to help me grow so much as a writer. So honestly, I'm excited to see what I'll be able to do after this. I think I'll be able to tackle writing a series differently now that I have the experience of writing this series because this is the first one I've ever written. So this has been a time and a half to write this freaking book, but I honestly think I'm gonna come out of it on the other side, a much, much better writer. It's just been a tough year to get there. And I'm, a, I'm not even gonna say a little, I'm afraid to put this book out, I'm afraid to, get all of those negative reviews on it um which is inevitable every book gets them no book is ever going to be universally liked but like after this struggle then seeing that um i think i'm just gonna like really gonna need to stay offline after this book gets published because i really don't think i'll be able to handle it with this one which is new it's never fun to see bad reviews of your books but i've definitely felt more like in a better headspace to see it before. With this one, I think I'm gonna be logging off for a good long while after I throw this book out there. Coming out of that last video, I would have filmed that in like December maybe. I think that was kind of like peak. Things were going really well for me <laughs> at that video. The books were selling really well. I was feeling very optimistic and I was really hoping this the amount of growth that I saw last year was unprecedented. Like from 2021 to 2022, my book sales were off by like 400%. Like the growth from those two years was astronomical. So from this year to this year, it stayed pretty consistent so far. So I haven't seen that kind of like crazy growth, but I haven't seen it dip down. It's a weird feeling because I'm like, you are seeing the same numbers you were seeing last year and you were so excited last year for these numbers but now I feel like I need to like outdo myself. I feel like I need to top myself. So I'm trying to knock it off and not do that. Having consistent sales over the past six months um, should be an accomplishment in and of itself, which you'll see in the, um, I guess it'll be kind of like the part two to this video where I show you all of the pie charts. I have already calculated it all, but all in all, I'm realizing, I think I had a couple of outlier years in 2021, 2020, 2021, and a little bit of 2022 because of the pandemic. And since that's when I really started my career, I think it's unfair to myself to compare myself to those years when I was locked inside with nothing to do but to focus on my career and my books. I think those were unusual years and I don't wanna live every year of my life like that where my entire life was my job. So it's a weird balance of trying not to compare myself to that version of myself without you know, giving myself credit for how hard I've worked to maintain a better work-life balance than I had back then but then I like see the numbers back then and like how many books I was writing in a year. And I was like, damn, I wish I could still do that. But I think I kind of look back on those years and I kind of romanticize that because I was stressed. <laughs> All of that's to say um, it's August and I have written one book that I'm not done with yet. I'm hoping to finish it next month. And then I'm thinking I'm gonna take a break after that. And I would love to get into Gracie's book. I would love to get back to my pen name book with Paige but I haven't set a release date for either of those yet. I'm not going to, I'm not gonna put up a pre-order. I'm not gonna put that stress or that deadline on it. I just got back from a writing retreat with like 10 other authors. So a lot of people were asking me like, what are you gonna write next? And everyone had all of these like lofty plans and like the next four books they're gonna write. And I have been that way for the past three, four years of my career. And for the first time, I have no desire to be that way. <laughs> I, I feel like I've been pushing it and pushing it and pushing it until I hit burnout and then I like let myself rest a little bit but not fully recover from burnout and then I start pushing it and pushing it and pushing it. I don't think I've ever like fully come out of that burnout state that I was talking about in that last video. There's also just a lot more that's going on in my personal life right now than when I started my career, which has taken up a lot of mental space and time. So all of that is to say, it's weird to look back at these videos of myself because my priorities are just so different 
right now and to be honest i feel like for your sake for the viewer's sake my old priorities were more interesting to watch i was a lot more not that i was working harder but i was working more and i get it because the creators that i like to watch is interesting when they have all these things going on and they're churning out these books and stuff and i think i kind of put that pressure on myself to keep up with that unreasonable um output but for what for who like it wasn't for me. <laughs> I figured that out. I thought it was. It wasn't for me. For the rest of this year, um, I don't have any plans and I'm not going to make any plans and I'm going to enjoy that. That's where I'm at right now. I'm going to finish writing the last book in the series that has absolutely taken over my life since I started writing it in 2020. And instead of like rushing to the finish line and trying to please everyone else, I'm going to just try and sit back and enjoy it. I have the kickstarter going on right now which has been so heartwarming to see the support for and someone left me a comment i think it was on youtube or maybe it was on tiktok just that like literally i teared up when i saw it <laughs> it was just like so supportive and kind i can't even remember i'm gonna have to go find it and it's so easy for me to like gloss over these little moments when i'm trying so hard to hit the next milestone or hit the next goal and right now as cliche as it sounds that's that's the priority is to stop and smell the roses and whatnot. I also have another really exciting thing that has to do with the marionette series um, coming up. I think it's December. It'll be the end of this year. I have signed the contract. It's a done deal, but I don't have anything that I can like show you or like give you specifics on. So I'm kind of waiting to announce that and tell you about it until I have the things. But I think I talked about it on Patreon, so I guess some of you do know. But now you have a timeline for it. I'll probably talk more about it around like November and December. So even with this last Marionette's book coming out, Marionette's things will still be happening. I do have a million and one ideas for spin-off stuff, so I would love to get to that eventually. But I do think I need a break after Ruthless ends before I jump into that. I, I thought there was more of reflections in that video for us to react to, but that's it. So that's going to be it for today's video. I hope you guys are all doing well. I'm not sure what day this is going up, but the Marionettes Kickstarter should still be running. If you want to sweep in, you can get signed copies of the books, the paperbacks or the hardcovers, a single one or the full set. You can get the limited edition jigsaw puzzle. There's only 150 of them in the world. That link is down below. And I think I'll just see you guys in our next video very, very soon if you're interested in the pie charts and numbers comparison for the past six months that'll probably be our next video bye no.